Hello everyone, in today's video I'm just going to show you a little job that a customer has asked me to do, uh, just finishing off some bits and bobs, I don't mind doing it, they've been a great customer these guys, these guys have. Um, what they want is a little sort of shelving wall built, um, they've had some work done on the house and obviously trying to organise things, they've got kids and there's sort of stuff everywhere as anyone that's got kids will know, you know, kids make stuff. Um, so basically what they've done, what I've done is um, I've gone to my local, local timbers, timber merchant and I've managed to get these uh, they're fairly wide laminated boards and they come, I think it's about 270 mil wide and what we're after is actually 400 mil wide. So what I've done is uh, bought e enough extra and cut them down the middle and then rejoined them. You can't actually see, I've made such a good job of jointing them together. I basically put them over my table saw, cleaned the edges up and then biscuit jointed them together. Here you can just see a joint there, look. Um, so, you know, really happy with they've come out. Um, we've now got 400 wide, nice board. It's fairly stable, as you can see, it's sort of a block board, so um, it shouldn't curl too much because obviously the grain goes opposite ways for each one of these um, bits that have been joined together. So basically, uh, it's about 2.4 from floor to ceiling, 2.3 actually, and it's about 1.7 wide. So what I'm gonna do is fairly simple joinery here, not dissimilar to the um, mezzanine bunk bed things I made all I'm going to do is put a stopped a trench in on the uprights what I call the gable the gable ends and then all I'll do is obviously just um, house those shelves into them I'll put like I said a little stopped end on the front so the housing doesn't come all the way through I'll let the housing go all the way through on the back because you're not going to see it so so yeah I've marked them all out uh, I'm going to cut a piece of ply I've got some spare ply here um, make myself up a little template that I can use my router a jig and then I can get all those cut, cut those to length and uh, then it's a simple case of assembling it and taking it inside. So as you can see I've made myself a, a template out of some spare ply, oh excuse the wind, the wind's really picked up and I've done a little test uh, trench on here and it fits really nicely, I'll just if I can put that in there one handed, uh, fits really nicely, uh, the timber fits really nicely into it so I know I'm happy with that so all I can do now is cut all these others out uh, take all the edges off, uh, the sharp edges off this, give it a little sand up and then put it together and take it inside. Right, so I've made my template which I'm happy with. Um, it's pretty similar to other templates I make. Uh, so what I've done is made it so it's got a fence down one side um, and you can see I plunge the, I make it so that the cut of the router goes into the fence slightly and these are marks if you can see that help me line up against my marks where my housings are obviously this is a stopped uh, housing it doesn't go all the way through so I've made the jig so it stops about 25 mil short of the front so now it's a simple case putting it up against the edge I hope you can hear this is quite windy today putting it up against the edge lining it up Let me show you that look lining it up with these uh, this cutout which is in my template uh, clamping it down and then running that out and as I said the the router will hit this stop there and leave the that, that stopped trench so it doesn't go all the way through. So uh, let's get those cut. Plenty of clamps on it because I don't want it to go anywhere. It's been a lot of work gone into um, a lot of work gone into laminating these boards up, so I don't obviously want to spoil one because um, that would uh, be a disaster. Right, tight against the fence, everything square. Let's get that to get this first one done. blow out. Absolutely awesome these little things. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Just double check that. I know I've 
checked it once, but I don't want to check it again. Absolutely gorgeous. Right, let's go. Put the rest of it on time lapse. So there, quickly got those done. Takes a few extra minutes to make a jig. It takes a few extra minutes to, to make a template. But look how quick, what was that? It wasn't even sort of five or 10 minutes to cut all of those trenches, all perfect, all the right size, absolutely fantastic. So that's the bulk of the work done really. What I'm gonna do now is, um, cause these are just rough lengths, I'm gonna get my um, track saw out. I'm just gonna cut these ends off here, cut those ends off there and then, uh, go around with my block plane and knock all the, the sharp edges off and then we can just cut the shelves to size uh, we've got a little stocked uh, shoulder to cut on those uh, put some holes in here and then we can uh, look at getting it screwed together Myself backed into a bit of a corner here, <laughs> a bit tight for space. Let's just move it out a bit. Oh. Oh, right, okay, that's the. I guess I can get behind the saw then. Still in position. Not bad. Do a scribe cut first down there. I just have to quickly say, I can't believe that I've only had this saw, or, or track saw, uh, guide rail saw, plunge saw, whatever you want to call them, for, for not even 12 months. I'm, I don't think I resisted getting one. I just thought the circular saw I'd got and the table saw was, was all I needed, but these are just an amazing bit of kit. And I'm sure there probably isn't many people like me who haven't got one of these, but if you haven't got one, it doesn't matter what make it is, get one. They're absolutely fantastic. The cut that this put across the end of this softwood is absolutely sublime, so you're very, very happy I bought this. Right, so I'll just get a bit of sandpaper, just clean the sharp edges off these trenches and knock the sharp edges off with the arrows and then start working on the shelves. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, it fits in the trench and uh, I marked my uh, where my screws are going to go and I've marked it and drilled it through and what that does it just gives me a, a sort of rod to put all the holes in exactly the same place I've only put a little pilot hole through so it won't have uh, pushed out the grain too bad on the other side I'll just re-drill them from the other side because these shells are just going to be screwed uh, straight through the back so yeah, just a little rod like that just helps keep all the screws in the right place, keep them in the centre of the trench as well. So as I said, just to start working on the shelves, what I'm going to do really simply here is just, uh, these shelves have got to be 1690, which allows for the depth of the trench and the end panel. Uh, so all I'm going to do is square them across and use a track saw just to clean them up, and then we've just got to cut a that little stopped uh, trench out the end of that little shoulder. So uh, again, track saw is going to come in handy for this and the big square. Let's put that on time lapse. So I've just got to cut this little uh, tiny section for this stopped housing off the end of here. What I'm going to do to make sure it's nice and accurate is I've set my gauge. So I basically measure back the amount I need, which in this case it's stopped back 35 mil. Apologies if you can't hear this, but the wind's blowing right into the camera. The camera's already blown over once, so I'm doing my best. Set my gauge, because that's got to be nice and accurate, so we get the same distance each time. And then rather than use the jigsaw, uh, because they can uh, wander off square a little bit, and you're going to see this joint from the front, what I'm going to do is just use my circular saw. I know that'll cut a nice square um, cut against my square, and then finish it off with the jigsaw. Just nice and careful with this, it doesn't tear out too much. Lovely, and then we'll just clean it out with a jigsaw. And then what we'll also do, because this is a flush, uh, the joint is flush along the top, so the shells are the same width as the gables, I'll just take a tiny angle off block plane, old carpenter's V, carpenter's V joint trick, and just a tiny little rub with the sandpaper. And that's it, absolutely cracking, I hope you can see that. That'll fit nicely now uh, over that stopped trench. Right, we've had all kinds of shenanigans here today. The, the day's gone from being bright and sunshine to the massive windstorm, to the massive shower storm, to sort of now back to warm again. So what I've had to do is sort of abandoned ship out here. I've basically got all the carpentry work done. I've taken it all inside and what I'm going to do is screw it together sort of in positions laying down and just stand it up. Um, I'm doing a quick piece out here just because um, I might just only be able to set the camera up and put some either time lapse or a bit of music because the, the customer's in there and obviously I need to respect their privacy and um, I don't want to make a video although I could show me 
physically doing it. I don't want to make a video that's got you know um, audio of people having private conversations. So um, that's what may be coming next. Just a little bit of footage with a little bit of music showing me putting it together and standing up. Hopefully, I'll be able to do just a little piece uh, at the end to you know give you my thoughts and how it's gone. Just the right height. Look at that beast. Lovely. Superb. Right. Let's have a quick look. Oh, gosh, super zoom. So there you can see, look, that's in the space it had to fit between uh, this door opening here. So, and, and had to fit all of these little baskets in. So as you can see, that's gonna give a colossal amount of storage in there now. What I've done, uh, these shelves aren't strong enough to support their weight all the way across all that weight on. So I've got some loose shelves here, look, that I've made. And what I say to the customer is gonna do is decide where they want their baskets to go and then these will basically you can see that they slide them in they're not as wide if they slide them in what i'll do is come back because i've got some other jobs to, to do here i'll come back and fix them in properly i haven't trenched them or anything you can see even the bottom one here look as a is a thicker one goes under there so basically i'll just quickly shove those in you'll see what i'm talking about try and do it one-handed so you get the idea that they'll go in there once I didn't want to oh, get it up like on so you'll see you'll see what I mean I didn't want to fix those in permanent because it might not have fitted exactly where the boxes were um, but obviously that'll just add additional support and there's, so there's two more to go there so yeah really happy with that I, I can't pan around too much because I don't want to um, need to try and preserve the privacy of the customers inside of the customer's house so this is a sort of semi-permanent so what I should do now is um, find some way to fix it to the wall at the top and possibly at the bottom obviously you just don't want that falling off so yeah really really happy with that uh, that'll hold an immense amount of weight you'll notice that I didn't glue it I've used five by 60 more screws it's not going to go anywhere and because of the state of the weather and everything outside um, I couldn't really build it and bring it around and then what I didn't want to have to do is start to get and use adhesives and stuff over this carpet. So I'm happy with that. Uh, job looks absolutely brilliant. So I know it's just, uh, you know, it's another one. It's not the most technical joiner. It's pretty simple, but it's going to create a massive sort of storage wall for this family to, you know, reorganize all their stuff because they've got kids. And, you know, as I said earlier, kids means stuff. So um, just a little video. I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching.